distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me first of all to welcome all of you who have come from abroad to Thailand. I hope that your time here will be both fruitful and enjoyable. It is a great pleasure for me to be among distinguished uh, participants of this gathering of important people that I believe go some way to shape the events of the world. To share some thoughts on the topic of the future of news, truth, courage, and the importance of resisting political dogma. I have to say that topic is given to me by the organizers. It's quite a mouthful, and it is certainly very, very significant. Not just for what you are doing as journalists, broadcasters, or the media, but actually for the future of democracy, peace, and prosperity in the world. So let me just start by saying what I feel about where we are today. I feel that we live in an era full of paradoxes. First, so many of us had grown up as a generation that believed that traditional warfare was a thing of the past. But now, there are still talks about the risk of maybe another world war. We live in an era where we see unprecedented technological progress. The scope, the pace, unseen in the history of mankind. And yet, we are facing an existential threat of climate change, where we have not been able to come up with either technology or change our ways of doing things to address the issue the way we should be doing in order to save ourselves and the planet. We live in an era where we've just made tremendous progress in terms of eradicating poverty. But we are also witnessing unprecedented inequalities in terms of income, wealth, opportunities in almost every society. And also witnessing a young generation that for the first time feels that maybe their future and their lives will not be as, the future may not be as bright and their lives may not be as prosperous as their parents. And we live in an era where information is most easily accessible to everyone. But we are also facing the risk of misinformation and disinformation taking over the world. Now, you may be wondering why I'm talking about this. This is not your responsibilities. Maybe it's the responsibilities of politicians. But I have to say that just as so often life imitates art, you'll be surprised at how so many events are also shaped by the news. And so allow me to just take a step backwards and think about what you've all had to do and fight in the past to remain true to your ideals of being custodians of truth, of being a cornerstone of democracy. In the past, you've all had to fight many forms of authoritarianism. And in the past, the state used to have pretty much a monopoly on how to disseminate information to the public. And anyone challenging the narrative of the state faces physical, legal, and other threats. But there was a long fight where we demanded freedom, we demanded access to information, we demanded choice through liberalization of the media. And largely, you and, I, and us have all succeeded in doing so, creating a much more competitive and vibrant environment in which the media can operate. 
But then the game began to change because the authoritarians, the people who want to control information, have more subtle ways of interfering with the work that you do. More subtle forms of manipulation, and then through liberalization, because the media also became businesses, one form of interference is through business influence. And the challenge that you now face in trying to do your job, but also having to watch the bottom line. And then technology, as I said, came along, and suddenly everybody in the world had access to information and had the ability to disseminate information. And while perhaps I was one of the people who was rather optimistic about human nature, that this would enable all of us to be better informed, instead what we discover is perhaps it's part of human nature to trap themselves in echo chambers so the world became more polarized. And in political and other conflicts, we then use information as weapons. With the growth of misinformation or disinformation, perhaps one of the topics that would probably be most discussed in a forum like this today. I'm recounting this to say that the challenges facing all of you today, some will be in traditional forms, but others is due to this new environment that you all operate in. And in trying to suggest what would be the important factors and ways in which you could face up to these challenges, let me just tell you a story in the news in Thailand recently. Many of you may know that we just had a process of uh, selection for the new Senate, uh, a system that you don't need or don't want to really understand or know. But the idea was that we would have a Senate that would have representatives from all occupations, including those in the media and you know, creative writers as one section. And there was a contro controversy about who qualifies to be a representative of those from the media. Indeed, one candidate that had uh, perhaps, I think, one of, perhaps the most votes turned out to have experience in the media as somebody who used the public announcement system in her local community and would MC at weddings and other functions. So there was a bit of an uproar from people who saw themselves as professional journalists. I tell this story to tell you that the, to face all the challenges that I've mentioned before, it comes down to this. What is it that makes you a professional journalist? rather than someone who could just post or upload anything onto the internet, rather than someone who simply shares stories that they receive. Because if you can answer this question and distinguish yourself that this is what makes you a professional journalist, I think you're almost all the way there to face up to the challenges of today. So first, Truth, something that maybe 10, 20 years ago we never felt would become so complicated a concept. But now, your job, the key part of your job is that you can simply not just report. Because anybody can be reporters now. But one of the most important jobs that makes you a professional journalist is that you are 
there to fact check for consumers, for the people. Because everybody is bombarded with information, but it is simply your job to be that filter to make sure that what gets out to the consumers, to the public, is actually truth. And to do that, you have to have knowledge and you have to have certain skills, particularly now being digitally literate. And it means that you have to always be open to diverse sources to make sure that you can actually fact check all that information that is coming out. And if you could go one step further, which is to actually seek out truth that is often buried either by the authorities or by those that are rich and powerful. So proactive investigative journalism is in need more than ever before. That's the first part, truth. But it's simply not enough to know the truth or to want to get the truth out. The second part involves courage. Because in order to pursue and disseminate truth, you will come up against various obstacles. And it is vitally important that your job is to hold those in power to account. That takes courage, and I'm sure you know so many stories or examples or instances where your colleagues have in the past have to risk their lives and risk everything in pursuit of the truth, in, in trying to get the truth out. And collectively, as a body, you should also go some way towards making sure that there are good framework or environments to protect your colleagues in trying to do this job. That means rules in the workplace, that means the law of the land. You should be active in making sure that this environment can take shape. And Apart from truth and courage, the obstacle that you face today, as the title suggests, is, is about dogma. Actually, I would go beyond political dogma. There is economic dogma, there is dogma in terms of narratives that are being created or perpetuated by many groups of people for their own interests and gains. And the importance of resisting this kind of dogma is what makes you a professional journalist, balanced and impartial. That doesn't mean you cannot express your opinions, but you just have to be transparent about them being opinions and what those opinions are based on. And to argue your case through the merits of the case, rather than repeating whatever dogma or which side you are seen to be on. And perhaps when I talk about resisting dogma, perhaps this may sound odd, but the biggest courage will now have to be actually facing up to those people who are supposedly on your side. I say this because in Thailand, as in many places, because of the polarization due to the echo chamber effects that I've talked about, I find that in many countries, many media outlets now decided that business-wise or for other reasons, it's better to become partisan. Being neutral doesn't guarantee you a market. Being impartial doesn't guarantee you a market and makes you actually the enemies of the extremes. And they're after you first. 
which is why I find perhaps the biggest courage it takes now is when you actually call out your own side. The biggest courage to break with the expectations of your audience and supporters when you need to do it to get the truth out. That is something that will be a big challenge for many of you. And I know it's a difficult thing to do. I was certainly one that paid the price as a politician in trying to create this middle ground and actually calling out the things that I think are wrong about what is perceived to be on my own side. But all this, the importance of truth, to find it, to disseminate it, the courage to face up to those that are powerful, and the determination to resist dogma is not only needed, but it is urgent. As I said before, so many of us now fear the risk of widespread violence, conflict, and war. So many of us see the loss of opportunities that could be, despite the fact that human has made so much progress technologically. So it is time to renew and reinvigorate the professionalism of your profession. Truth courage and the importance of resisting dogma is the way forward and the future of news. Thank you. Mr. Apisit Bechachiwa, a former Prime Minister of Thailand.